Let's see the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We have Yahuza Getzo who joins the conversation as we look at uh, the imminent threats following the prison break in Abuja. It's no longer news that a custodial facility in Koji area of Nigeria's capital, Abuja, was breached on Wednesday by the Islamic State West African province, ISWEP, causing hundreds of detainees to regain freedom, including those held on the charges of committing, committing acts of terrorism. Uh, the medium security facility is one that is uh, central in holding people who are facing charges of terrorism. Now, in a statement that was released uh, through a propaganda news outlet, it sort of made claims uh, saying they're responsible for the attack, saying its fight has demolished the walls of the facility and successfully liberated dozens of prisoners. Reports also say that the authorities scrambled for reinforcement in response to the raid, which involved the use of explosive devices and detainees' escape. The country's Minister of Defense, Bashi Magashi, quoted uh, to say that uh, an assessment of the incident and profiling of the escapees are ongoing. He also added that the prison had about 994 inmates and over 600 escaped. Some of the prisoners who escaped have been recaptured, according to him, and returned to the facility. Maybe by the close of day, we'll have uh, captured and returned every other person. I mean, sounds like it's very easy. Uh, you know, the defense minister also noted that the attackers were mostly likely Boko Haram members because we have a sizable number of Boko Haram suspects in detention. And presently, according to him, they cannot locate any of them. Okay. Now, uh, the attack also, uh, following the claim by ESWEB members, speaking about freeing prisoners in 39 minutes long video, uh, it was actually, uh, you know, sent out. But I'll just leave it at that, as we have Yawuza Getsu uh, sharing his thoughts and telling us uh, what he understands uh, with the current situation, what's going on with it. Yawuza Getsu, thank you so much for being part of uh, the breakfast this thank morning. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Viewer. All right, so can you quickly tell us, as an expert that you are, uh, can you tell us what you know about this attack and what you think about the attack? Well, uh, I cannot say I, I, I know anything about the attack because if I say I know anything about the attack, it means I have the preliminary information. So, but what I see and what my thought about it is the fact that uh, uh, it is exhibiting and exposing the Buhara administration more uh, exposing its incapability, it's exposing its inability, exposing its lack of sincerity and honesty, uh, exposing its weaknesses, and exposing um, its inability to manage intelligence, to gather intelligence and to utilize intelligence. And uh, it's also explaining its inability to uh, provide adequate uh, uh, modern technology to deal with the uh, criminal and terrorists, despite the fact that uh, it has been claiming to have spent huge amount of money over time from the time when they came into power to date. They have been deceiving people with the Tokano. They have been deceiving people with uh, other arms uh, they procured. And um, it has uh, also explained and exposed the level of corruption uh, the level of inability of the government to deal with the corruption, because it has been made very clear by late uh, General Atahiru, the former chief of army staff that died in Kaduna flood crash, who made it very clear at a session, preliminary, preliminary session with the Senate Committee on Army, when he submitted reports on expenditure and for, on procurement of hardware and other things, when they asked him a number of questions, and he responded, and I caught. You know who you give your money? You know when you give the money? You know how much you give them? They are in my office. You know them. You can call them to come and explain to you how the money was spent. So, and at the same time, uh, the National Security Advisor had made mention in a statement credited to the BBC House of him on the BBC House 
where he made mention that huge amount of money had been given to the military and other security personnel for the purchase and procurement of uh, modern technology in order to fight terrorists, armed bandits, Boko Haram, ESN, and others. But yet, all we are seeing and all we are hearing from Buhari administration is lies. All we are hearing and seeing from Buhari administration is in respect to security is disappointment. It's an embarrassment, it's a national embarrassment and even international embarrassment. Because how can you, a jailbreak happens sometimes in Kaba, in, 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 in Kogi state, and later in, in Plateau state in Jos. But yet, Nigeria and Nigerian government as well as Buhari administration did not take any lesson. Whenever there is any activity uh, of such uh, security breach, by criminals, by bandits, by whosoever. Lai Mohammed will come out, who is the Minister of Information, will come out and tell us that they know the finances of the Boko Haram, they know the finances of ISWAP, they know the finances of all the criminals that we have in the country, including the ESN, the bandits, uh, uh, and uh, uh, kidnappers for ransom, and so on and so forth. But yet the government have not been able to clamp them down. Uh, so this is exhibition of irresponsibility. In fact, if you say there is no government in Nigeria as far as I'm concerned, you're supposed to be rewarded. Because a government that cannot uh, uh, take responsibility of its constitutional responsibility cannot demonstrate ability to manage situations. Common situation. Where are the, uh, the Air Force base we have? Where are the, all the military formations, the DSS headquarters? How many mobile, uh, mobile police units do we have in Abuja? And how can this activity happen? For these guys to come and launch the attack, successfully leave, could they have only one interest? Only one interest, not two interests. So if by the time they started attacking at around 9.45, 10, 10 or 5 p.m., between Kuji and all the military formations is not up to up to the maximum of 60 kilometers. And between Kuji and the airport, International Namdi uh, Azukwe um, International Airport in Abuja, where you have Air Force Base, where you have Air Force Mighty, where you have uh, Air Force so-called Tukano, where you have uh, Air Force uh, 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 so-called uh, military cantonment and so on and so forth. You have so many security formations. It's not 12 to 7 kilometers. And at the same time, between Kuji uh, and the force headquarters, uh, at maximum, is 35 kilometers. And then between Kuji and DSS of DSS headquarters, at maximum, is 20 kilometers. Between Kuji and pres presidential presidency, the presidential villa, uh, is not up to, at maximum, is 35 to 40 kilometers. So why didn't you use all these machineries to fight them uh, to using the airstrike and others so that you can be able to demoralize them, neutralize them, and be able to, 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 to kind of uh, arrest some of the, the, the culprits? But it is sad, disheartening, disappointing, discouraging that Buhara administration will always tell you after, uh, 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 what do I call it, uh, after actual review. And after, after actual review, will be, uh, Buhari will just go on air and say, I will ensure. I will ensure. I will ensure. You will ensure what? Yeah, who's a, you yeah, will who's ensure a get, that so? more of you are witness or what? Yeah, who's a get, so? Uh, let's still stay with the conversation now on the Kujay prison attack and the fact that ISWAP has claimed responsibility for freeing this terrorist. The president, on the one hand, has expressed shock and also he's blamed the intelligence system for how organized, you know, these terrorists can be, attack, you know, a facility with all of these weapons without a counterattack. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you think that in the fight against insecurity in Nigeria, that, 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 uh, that intelligence is, that gathering is a major problem for us? That is a brutal uh, 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 psychology and uh, 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 mental uh, 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 um, 
kind of a, a dislocation. That's what I consider it. Because it clearly exhibits and explains that Buhari is never serious about issues of security in Nigeria. How can you have such a situation when presidential convoy was attacked, an ACC that has been very dedicated, very committed, very hardworking, very passionate, very patriotic, has been killed in Kaguna. You, your convoy was attacked, and a national uh, prison of that a mighty prison that have a very high profile uh, uh, criminal in detention, uh, that is Sokuji, was uh, was broken by criminals. And then you 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 just make an a, 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 a short a, a short brief a, a short uh, press brief and tell people that you are blaming intelligence and you fly to to Senegal. Uh, why can't you cancel the the journey, whatever important it is? Does that mean that the people that are being lo are losing their lives, you are traveling, that you are wasting resources and deceiving Nigerians? And yet, there is no reward for Nigeria from all the, uh, the, the work around that you are doing. Is, is, are you tell, trying to tell Nigerians that you are putting the blame on, 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 on intelligence? If you are putting the blame on intelligence, when the uh, uh, just jailbreak happened, and when that of uh, 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 Kaba, of Kogi State happened, and all other, uh, when when a lot of a national embarrassment, a lot of attacks, and people are being killed, you are still promoting military, you are still promoting DSS, you are still promoting commissioner, uh, police officers. On what merit are you promoting them? And you are still promoting the intelligence you have been promoting them, from the position, from the, the uh, lieutenant to, to, to captain, from captain to major, from uh, major, to, to, to whatever, from lieutenant colonel to colonel, from colonel to brigadier, brigadier to brigadier general, brigadier general to lieutenant general, lieutenant general to major general. And all this nonsense you are doing, why can't you use conditional promotion? Whosoever is responsible for security of so, 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 or of intelligence of area A, B, C, D, his promotion will be determined by his ability to manage those areas. But how many people have been, how many uh, intelligence personnel have been abusing their offices, using infinity? Look at their financial profiling. Where are they getting all these resources and all those money they own? And you are saying that you put the blame on, on, on intelligence. So if you put the blame on intelligence, what action have you taken? There was nobody was asked to, was forced asked to resign. Nobody was uh, dismissed. Nobody was uh, suspended. You're saying that the president, nobody I was, mean, you're, you're uh, saying that... Uh, uh, nobody's rank was removed because of all this nonsense and nuisance. And you are still telling people that you are, you are, you are, you are putting the blame on intelligence. So what action have you taken on the intelligence during all the... So are you saying that, you know, the, the, the issue of intelligence or the intelligence system in our security process is not faulted? You don't support the president on that? As much as it's okay to want to blame the president, what exactly is the issue? Why we well, have the Tucano jets and what it is? And it feels like we're being overwhelmed by this terrorist. Sorry, your question you didn't, it wasn't clear to me. My question is, do you support the position of the president that intelligence system is a failure and failed, and that's the reason why um, that attack was successful without a counterattack? So let him, he would have overhauled the, the intelligence. There was no counterattack because of the weakness of the government. There was no counterattack because of the inability of the government to deal with the situation. There is no counterattack because the government is never responsible. There is no counterattack because the government exhibits its weakness and inability to take its constitutional responsibility. Nigerians have a mandate for them to be pro provided with right and adequate security and use the intelligence and gather the intelligence uh, um, 
administer the use the uh, whatever information you have from the intelligence and deal with the situation decisively. How many of this type of these attacks had happened before? Was there any uh, a, a, a suspension of any uh, intelligence personnel? Was there any dismissal? Was there anybody that was asked to resign because of his, 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 his or her inability to deliver? So the, the, any, the president has to oversee... Has been expelled from the service because he or she was found wanting? Uh, and, it, and the president is responsible for overseeing all of the suspension and all that should happen in the intelligence unit. Sorry? The president should be held responsible for ensuring that uh, people are sacked or someone uh, is taking responsibility in that particular line. Is that what chiefs. you're saying? Who appointed the intelligence chiefs? All right. Uh, quickly, you know the president? Yeah, I also guess so. Yeah, let's, let's just add this one just as you answer because we're out of time now. What, uh, what should we, you know, be expecting as Nigerians, especially those who live in the FCT? Uh, we have that uh, out of uh, 900, about 1,000 inmates, you have 111 inmates left, according to uh, the reports that we're getting and all of the feelers. Uh, so, so what should be the expectation? What is the implication of all of this in, on our security well, The implication as a people? is that those that have been uh, relieved by the attackers, especially the Boko Haram and Isof, members, they will definitely, they are not going to be in the FCT. The rest are short. They will distribute themselves and regroup somewhere and reorganize themselves for further launching of more attacks. Especially, I'm calling on the public to be very, very careful, especially uh, in respect to uh, church and mocks activities, uh, public Play, avoid public places unless it is, if it is very necessary. Most, most especially the coming Salah celebration. People should be very, very careful. Because these guys will reorganize themselves and launch their attacks on government facilities, on public facilities, and public places. They can mobilize themselves and detonate explosives around uh, markets, uh, churches, mosques, uh, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. Most, uh, so people need to be very, very careful. And then, if you have any information and there is any way you can help the intelligence, provide the information quietly and be careful for your identity. Because most of our intelligence and security personnel are also not sincere and honest. Because you provide them with information, they will go by the side and provide your information to the culprits and say it was Mr. John, uh, Adekule Ahmed, or so, 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 street, or so, 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 number, or so, 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 this. They will provide your identity. That is why Nigerians are not having confidence and trust on the intelligence in terms of providing them with the required information. Well, Yauzo Ghetto, thank you so much for being part of the show. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, listeners and viewers. Have a time. Pleasant time. Now then, uh, that's the size of a conversation right here on The Breakfast. Uh, we take a break. When we return, the show continues. Stay with us.